the center of our joy. And we could just only remember that we can lay aside every sin and wait, whatever's weighing us down and receive that joy, allow him to come into our lives. You know, I just want to reread the scripture that was given us. Praise God. You can stand if you want to. You heard me. Praise God. You know, we have Christ as our example. You know, uh, first of all, I just want to thank God this morning for and give him all the praise and glory for waking us up, coming to the house of God one more time in our right mind. And I just want to share with you that I went to my husband's mother's funeral, our home going yesterday. And I heard a lot about many things, you know. I heard about many, many things that I didn't know. And it's blessed my soul today. And I want to, you know, just share with you Jesus. Because he is the reason for the season every day of our lives. <coughs> First, I just want to pray and then I'll read the scripture. Father God, I thank you, Lord, this morning for blessing us to be here, Lord God. And Father, only you can feed us with the word of God. Only you can. We can speak it, Lord, but it's up to you to call it to be nursement to our bodies. To bless us, Lord, the way it should bless us. Lord, our hope is in you today. We don't have no hope without you. I found it out, Lord, when I was without you, Jesus. I didn't have any hope, but today I've got hope because of you in our lives today. So, Lord, bless us all this morning in this service, oh God. And, Lord, feed us with this food that's wonderful for us to eat, oh God, and that we will be able to stand before the world and say that Jesus lives within me, and I've got help all day. Lord, help us to know that you are with us every day, 24-7. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, it reads as Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And it talks about Christ, our example. Praise God. we got Jesus as our example. Praise God. Therefore, seeing we have, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and seeing that which so easily beset us or cause us to be changed or cause us to come against us that we lose our focus. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking up to who? Jesus, Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the Lord God. Amen. You know, that's what blesses my soul today. As I hear the word of God, as many people, you may be seated, I'm sorry. Praise God. As I hear many people expound the word of God, and, and I realize that each and every one of us are different. Our calls are different. Our purposes are different. We don't, our purpose is different. So when my purpose here today, set aside from Christ, is to show that Christ is my life down outside this church. But today, my focus is to listen and share with you what Jesus has given me to share with you all this morning. To feed us with the word of God that is great, that will never get stale. You get what I'm saying? The word of God will never get stale. It's always fresh every day. And if we find that we're getting stale food, we need to think about it. What, what's the matter here with this food? Uh-uh. Something's going wrong with this food. Because I have to remember what happened with the children of Israel when they was hungry. Praise God. Mm -hmm. When they was hungry and they was in the children's ears was in the wilderness and they were hungry and they was asking God for food and they they, was, they didn't know, they just lost all hope. And the Lord allowed manna, right? Do you remember that story? About manna, he sent manna from heaven. Remember that? Anybody remember that story? Can you remember that story? Anybody here remember? Any of you all back there remember that story? Okay, if you don't remember, let me tell you a little bit about it. What happened was, 
that he rained manna from heaven and they ate and they had plenty. But he told them, don't care no more. Don't carry it, you know, to the homes after they get through eating that night. Don't gather up no food and take it. Some of them did it anyway. Because they figured, let's hold this because I might, he might not do it tomorrow, you know. So they hid it. And you know what happened? It began to stink. Maggots began to get in it. It was no good, right? It was no good to eat. They couldn't eat it. But they didn't listen to what God was saying to him. If I fed you today, I'm going to feed you tomorrow. That's what he was really telling them. Don't, don't just listen to what I'm telling you. A lot of times we hear, but we don't hear. We hear, we hear with our ears, but we don't take in what he is telling us to do. Don't eat that. Don't take that. So I'm looking at the food today. This food today is from the throne of God today. It's not something thought about yesterday because I didn't think about it yesterday. I didn't think about it last night. Let me tell you when I thought about what he was saying to me this morning. This morning. Just before I was getting ready to come to church. That's when he gave me this word. Now the word of God is always great. It's always power. It's always plentiful. I mean, it, it will never get old. It will never get stale. But sometimes we try to prepare the food before like a week ahead. We don't know what God's people need a week from now. So that means we got to give them the food that is perfect for them what? right now, in this hour. And that's what the Lord is telling me. Today we have to, this is what we need. Today, we need to lay aside every sin and weight that would hold us down. We need to think about, don't think about what we done yesterday or last year or two years ago or ten years ago. Don't you let that drag you on in here in your mind. Lay aside that stuff. Forget about it. Because it can weight you down. But remember, he said, lay aside every weight. Everything that will hold you down. Everything that will come against your mind and bog you down. Lay it aside. Don't carry it, it become what a baggage. And what does baggages do? Talk to me. What does baggages do? It weighs you down. Yes, it does. And it may weigh you down so you just start dragging. So spiritually, that's what you will do. Start dragging. You start dragging the church, dragging you, dragging the work. Yeah, lay that stuff aside. Don't carry it no longer than it come into your mind. Whatever the enemy tries to bring to your mind, Begin to listen to what Jesus said to you. Listen to what his word said. Lay it aside. Don't you care it any. Don't you let it torch your spirit for one second. Not once, but just as soon as you can remember what this spirit is saying to your ears. Because you know what? It's a spirit. It's not the spirit of God, but it's the spirit of the enemy. So the minute you hear these things and bring them back and cause you to focus on them, you say, wait a minute. What did I tell you all uh, two weeks ago? That you are new creatures, right? We're new creatures, so we don't need to bog with being weighted down with all this stuff. Today is a new day. Today is a day that you to hear the voice of God. And the voice of God is telling us today, lay aside every sin and weight that's so easy to set you. And let us, we're in a race, right? We're in a race for where? Where are we in a race? Can anybody tell me what race we're in today? What race are we in? Well, today I want you to remember. Remember that the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to those that will endure to the end. That's what Ecclesiastes 9 and 11 says. You want to write it down. We have, God didn't give us the, this, this race to run in because we are strong or because we got wisdom, because we got knowledge. No, it's because we have laid aside every way to sin that does so easily set us. And we are looking to who? Uh, and we run in this race with patience. We got to be patient to run this race. We got to be patient with one another. Sometimes we get impatient, but we got to start thinking about God. What are you saying? I got to be. I got to be patient <coughs> with whatever is going on in my brother's life, in my sister's life. I got to be patient with them. I got to be patient because I don't know what they're going through. And if we do what Jesus says. We're going to be able to be family together. We're going to be able to be able to come together with oneness and help one another in this walk. So we are all in a race. 
for heaven. But there's one that want to stop us from getting there. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, it's not flesh and blood. But it's the enemy. And that's why God wants us to draw nigh to him. Listen to what he has to say to us. Now what went wrong for the children of Israel? What happened to them? What happened because that food, they didn't listen to God? What happened? They lost, they lost, they lost hope. They, they, they saw themselves and what the Lord God wanted them to see, look, you're not listening to what I'm saying. So today, how many people are sitting in here listening to the word of God? I used to did But now today, I know by the spirit of God that you all are listening to this message. You are listening because God gave it to you and you're gonna, it's going to be good for you. Because see, you were born for a purpose. Every one of us. Don't say that you was a mistake. Oh, I was just a mistake. No, you wasn't. So don't you let the devil tell you that you was a mistake. Because you are here. Every one of us have a purpose in God. The devil might tell you that. The world might tell you that. But don't you dare let the devil tell you that. And don't you carry that baggage with you any longer. You are here. You are here today for a purpose. You are here today for the glory of God. To show him up. And let him reign in you. Because he said, looking unto who? Jesus. The author and finisher of your faith. Your faith comes in. Let him deal with you. Let walk with him. Let him live in you. And you will see him, his faith increasing in you. You see his work, his work increasing in you. Yes, we own this race. But that race is not given to the swift or the strong. It's given to the person that will endure to the end. Them that will listen to what the word of God says. Like Reverend was saying the other day in, Re in Revelation. He that have an ear. Let him hear. So today, the Lord is saying the same thing. My brothers and my sisters, hear what the Spirit is saying to you. I'm just a mouthpiece, but I'm just speaking from the Spirit of God because he's not here in the flesh, but he's here in the Spirit. And he left his word here for us to lead up, live by, and guide us. And if we listen to the word of God, we will not go wrong. We will not go wrong. I, I know you've heard many testimonies. Or how God speaks to our minds. But it's so shallow. We don't see no person standing before us speaking. Sometimes we don't listen. Yesterday on my way back, I had to stop and get gas. My gas was getting low. And uh, I knew that I thought about uh, that I had $20. And I thought that I got the $20 and put it in my, uh, my purse. My goddaughter and I was looking for her to come to me. I looked at my tank. She was driving and she wasn't paying any attention. It was fourth of a tank. And she said, I think I said, oh no, you ain't gonna get me on the highway stop. No, I don't don't think here. That, uh uh that is too far. We hadn't even got to Greensboro. And I know it's going that fourth of a tank was gonna bring us from Greensboro home. Uh-uh. No way, uh-uh. So we looked and I couldn't find it. And she said, I know I saw the twenty dollars, I know I saw. And I couldn't remember I saw the $20. She said, well, when we stopped at the food thing, you must have dropped it. I, she said, I saw it. I said, no, I didn't see it. So uh, to make a long story short, but we, when we got, uh, I had to get, use my credit card, uh, my, my uh, debit card, and got the gas. And you know, about 10 minutes after we got that gas, the Lord said, you didn't take that $20. You left it. You saw it, but you left it at home. You didn't, you didn't take it. And I told her what the Lord said. So to prove when I got home, I looked at the $20 still in there. But see, God speaks to us, brothers and sisters. He lets us know that, listen to what I'm telling you. Just like he talked to the children of Israel. He said, don't take this matter. Don't take any home with you. Don't take any to your camps. Just eat as much as you want to eat today. And what he was telling them, I'm going to take care of you tomorrow. But they wouldn't trust that. So today, brothers and sisters, you can take God's word. It's a truth word. You can take it to heart. It will never fail you. It will not forsake you. God is real. He's the only one that can stand and tell you the truth, and it will not fail. Man will give you hope. They will give you knowledge. And they have good knowledge, right? We know God, men have good knowledge. But you see, it's not like the knowledge of God. 
He knows each and every one of us. He knows who we are. He knows every one of us sitting here. We got different thoughts going through our minds, and God knows every one of them. That's what makes him so miraculous. That's what makes him so great above any word of man's wisdom and knowledge. And I shared that with the a church the last Sunday night. I said, you know, I was thinking about many people, many men, great men and women have written many books, great books, so many millions of dollars. I said, but it's not greater than the Bible. Can you attest to that? No book that man could ever read, read is not greater than that Bible. That Bible has our whole life history in it. From Genesis to Revelation, to from the time we were born, to the time we die, to the next generation, come and go, come and go, come and go. That Bible will always stand for the truth and it can never change. God's word is great. You can trust it. You can say, God, I, I failed here and I've listened to this and I've listened to that. And, and I, 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 I'm failing. I'm failing. God said, but you didn't trust me. You've got to trust the one that made you. He said, I made man. So if he made you, he knows exactly what, how you take what you need. Think about it, brothers and sisters. Think about how great God's Bible is, his word is in there. And think about it will stand forever and it will not change. I have been uh, young and now I am old and I have never seen when God, people start trusting God, that he failed them. They always had a testimony of a running fountain of water, living waters coming from the fountain of life, that they had life, they was vitalized. They, were, they had great wisdom that came from God, and they never changed. And that's what helps us and keeps us. That's why we can't change. That's why I won't change, because he is real in me. There's a river of life flowing out through each and every one of us. Think about a river of life running out through every one of us. And while we are yet on this earth, that river will flow as long as we keep the gates open of the channel, the channel of our life, the channel of our heart. As long as that channel is open, he will send forth the rivers of life. And you will have testimonies that you can testify. And you know, know the reason why God made every one of our thoughts different? So that we can witness to one another. So one can't say, well, I'm greater than you. I'm greater than you. You're greater than us. No, every one of us came from God and everyone else have a different story, but it's a story that comes from God. And when we look at it, I make, I just glorify God in people's testimonies. Because it's not my testimony, but it's theirs. And but it's all coming from God. God kept you all. He saved you. And I look at y'all, you have come out of the cold. You are in the house now. You in the house, you're not out there in the cold world. We came out of that cold world. And we are in the house of God where there's heat and rain forever, the waters of life forever for each and every one of us. So brothers and sisters, hold on to this word knowing today that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. He starts us out little by little, but you know as it grows, it causes us to trust him even more. When hard times come, and they come, they come to make us stronger. Remember what Jesus said to them in I think St. John uh, 16, 33 or something like that? Where he said, uh, trials and tribulations will come. What, in this world? But it, no, in this world you will have trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer, of all comfort. So whatever you're going through today, or whatever you may come to go through tomorrow, the next day, the next month, believe me, you can trust God. So he's causing them trials to come to draw you close to him. That Because you know what? Think about it. We don't come close to God unless there's uh, something going wrong in our lives. If there's desperation, then we, we start calling out to God. We start praying, Jesus, help me. Yeah. So he does that to get our attention. He, he allows it. He don't do it. But he allowed those circumstances to bring us close to him. Because you know what Peter said? And I'm going to leave this with you, what Peter said. Uh, 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 was it James? James said 4, 6, and 7. He said, draw not to God. Resist the, no, draw not to God and I will draw not to you. Resist the devil and he will flee. So when you start resisting the devil and putting your minds on God, Satan gonna flee. He, where the word of God stands, where the word of God is speak, spoken, the devil cannot come against you. He cannot. There's no way he can because God's word is strong. The devil flees, the devil flees. Draw not to God. Try today. The next time you go into a trouble, a situation, you call out on God. 
It's even with that devil flip. You'll see that everything starts working up to your benefit. Yes, it will. So stand together today. Let's stand. Let's stand together and we thank God for this message today that we can, we're in a race and we can run and we're going to win. Think about it. You're going to win today. You're not going to lose. We're not in a losing battle. We're in a battle, but we're not in a losing one. Thank God. There's losing battles all out there in the world, but you're not in a losing battle today. Because, see, Jesus is our author and finish of our faith in it. We're not going to be winners. Think about it today. You are winners. We are winners today because of who is in our lives, because of Jesus Christ. So, brothers, I thank God. I'm gonna, while you're standing, I'm just going to thank God and pray hallelujah, glory to God. Father, we ask you to bless each and every one that are here. Father, the ones that heard this message, oh God, we ask you, Lord, to increase their faith, God. Let the power of the Holy Ghost open up a floodgate and pull down a wall there, whatever they're going through, Father. You reign upon them, Father. This is the message that you gave. So, Father, you increase it. Whatever they need, God, increase their faith in it so that they can see you, Jesus. Face to face. They can see you, God. They won't be seeing what man said, but they can see what you do and what you say, oh God, that your word is quick and powerful and sharp and in it, treasure sword. Grant each and every one that are here, Father. Bless them and keep them. Their families, oh God. Lord, you brought them out of the cold, and now they're in the house, oh God. You fulfill everything that they have need of. And Father, seeing these words, oh God, that you gave me to give them, seal them into their hearts. So, Lord, each day that they need it, it will come forth, oh God, like the water, fresh drink of water. You water that spirit, water that soul, oh God. In the power of the name of Jesus, we pray. And Father, we are careful to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. And brother of God, uh, minister Red of God, we continue to lift him up, Lord God, in his weakened state. Lord, can't nobody heal like you. So heal him and all those that are afflicted, oh God. Heal them today. And thank you, Father, for everyone that is here in the sight of my voice, God, that you will grant reward that they need, God, that they are here for a purpose, oh God. You have a plan for them and they're going to see it. Show them, oh God, what their purpose are. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God.